Rebuilding a model steam plant, part 20. Assembling the Stuart 501 boiler is a fiddly job and very different from assembling a Stuart 504 boiler. Previously I performed a hydraulic test on this boiler so I know that it is fit for the job. In this video I show when I purposely overpressurized a Stuart 500 boiler after pushing out a serious dent in the boiler barrel with hydraulic pressure. Here's the kit of parts for the 501 boiler. As you can see, I've polished up the boiler barrel and painted the parts. I've also drilled a hole which is a quarter of an inch in diameter underneath the front casting. This is where the pipe carrying the exhaust from the condenser fits. The sides of this boiler are anodized, so they're fairly heat resistant to start with, but I'm not leaving it at that. I'm fitting some heat insulation. This is the modern day safe equivalent of asbestos. I think it's made from China clay. It's good stuff though. In one of the videos I made a while back, I used a slightly thicker piece of this, covered my hand with it and turned the blowtorch on the insulation over my hand. And I never felt a thing until the workshop burnt down. Right, it's back to business. It's very fiddly assembling this boiler. You have to do first one side, then insert the boiler with everything loose and then fit the other side. In this clip I'm pushing the heat insulation into the correct position using a kitchen knife. I could have used a steel rule but they're all up in the other workshop. Once the boiler was loosely assembled I tightened each of the nuts to pull the end plates tight up against the side panels. This job was going quite well until I noticed that one of the side panels wasn't in the right place, so I slackened off all the tie bars again, and very gently using a small hammer and a piece of mahogany, I tapped the side panel into position. These side panels are made from sheet steel, and it's very thin, so I was really careful not to distort it or dent it. Once I'd done that, I found another problem. The boiler wasn't sat square onto the piece of wood on the bench. And why am I using a piece of plywood on the bench? Well, the underside of this boiler was scratching the worktop, so I thought I'd put it on a piece of wood. By slackening off the nuts for a third time, and then tapping the boiler and twisting it, finally it sat level on the bench. And now, hopefully for the final time, I re-tighten all the nuts. The boiler sits nice and squarely on the piece of wood. The side panels fit OK. The only problem now is the copper boiler isn't perfectly in the right position. This boiler is not actually fixed into the frame. So by fitting the safety valve and tapping it with a piece of mahogany, I corrected this. And now the boiler is perfectly aligned with the housing. Here's a close-up of the boiler back head. The two bushes on the left are for the water gauge, the small one at the top is for the pressure gauge and the one at the bottom right is for the check valve. I performed a hydraulic test on this boiler in 2021. I did a few at the same time using my hydraulic test rig and I also repaired a really serious dent in one of the boilers. Here's a clip from the video I made at the time. The 500 series boilers are designed to run at 60 pounds per square inch, so really the hydraulic test only needs to be 120 pounds per square inch. Watch what happens when I take the pressure higher than 150. As if by magic, the severe dent in the side of the boiler starts to disappear as the pressure increases. What you are about to see is not recommended and is only shown for reference in this video. Doing this could completely destroy many designs of model steam boilers, especially the centreflue type. This one is old and I am risking a sacrifice for the video by increasing the hydraulic pressure to 400 pounds per square inch. Well, just under 400 pounds per square inch to be exact. The boiler didn't split or leak. Here I'm removing one of the blanking plugs to drop the pressure. At around 400 psi this is what happened the ends of the boiler became very dished. And once again, you need a warning. Do not do this at home. There's no real risk with the hydraulic test, but it's not a good idea to strain the boiler to this level. Here, I'm carefully using a hide-faced hammer to make both of the ends of the boiler flat once again. The water pressure at 400 pounds per square inch has even made the barrel expand. 
This says a lot for the quality of these early Stuart boilers. First I over hammered one end and now I'm over hammering the other end. So both ends are now pressed inwards. The solution? Refill the boiler with water. The fact that the front end of the boiler was blown wasn't really an issue. All that happened was the copper moved into a position which was best to resist the pressure. I've connected the test rig to the boiler and I'm releasing the air using a different method. The union nut is slack until all the airs come out. When I see a solid column of water, I then tighten the union nut. The main problem with the boiler ends being blown out is the one with the bushes in it because I can't put a water gauge in there. In exactly the same way as I removed the dent, by applying some water pressure, the end of the boiler moved outwards. I applied the water pressure very slowly so I could see when the bushes were in line. Here the pressure is starting to drop, but that's because I'm undoing one of the plugs. When the water pressure in the boiler got down to about 10 pounds per square inch, I removed the plug and got quite wet. This has been an interesting experiment and it's something I've wanted to do for a lot of years. The dent is gone, or at least it's a lot better, and both of the end caps are more or less flat once again. I only tested this boiler to twice working pressure, which is 120 pounds per square inch of hydraulic pressure. And because it's not been overstressed like the one you've just seen, all of the boiler bushes are aligned with each other. It's really important that the water gauge fittings align with each other. This is the top water gauge fitting. I've applied some Loctite 542 to it, and here I'm screwing it in position. In this clip I'm fitting it using hand pressure alone. I've fitted a shim washer to make sure it ends up in the right position. But for that to happen, I will have to use a spanner. And that is in the next episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.